Thanks for all the questions regarding the flooding and the impact of the Pacific Highway. Everyone knows it's something I'm very concerned about. And I was on the ABC radio recently and they thought that my viewpoint was fairly unique. And so I thought I'd share it here. So I hope you find this interesting. I'll give you a bit of a background. I worked on that project as the manager of cadastral and geodetic integrity. And what that means is my surveying role is actually either side of the corridor. So I had to go up and down the highway. I've been on every single piece of land on the entire project. And I've also connected with a lot of farmers and landholders uh, who were having water issues. I've also represented landholders in the past in court actions against the RMS. I've also worked, contracted for the RMS. I've also worked in flood and fire modeling, in particular the uh, failures of the model against real world. And I've also been called as an expert witness to the Supreme Court. I'm also a local surveyor. I've worked in Lismore for over a decade. I'm a representative of the profession. I'm the chairman of the North Coast Group Institute of Surveyors. And on top of this, my hobby for nearly a decade was investigating flood myths around the world, including indigenous flood myths, and, uh, and trying to understand how they were impacted, how they were destroyed, and what lessons we can learn from it. So I think this probably does give me a particularly unique uh, assessment of this. And I'll address all of these things, the indigenous flood markers, the failure of localized flood models, uh, and, and much more controversial topics in later videos. So this video is just to clear up something I said on the radio. I can't remember how I said it. If you've ever been interviewed on a radio, which I hadn't, uh, you kind of just talk and say things. And then afterwards, you're like, did I say that right? So I want to clear this up. This is a historic record perspective of why flood modeling in particular seems to always fail. And so for this example, I'll use Brisbane because it has much more data than Lismore. And I can actually demonstrate why the need for a kind of broader view of flood modeling is really imperative. So if we go onto the bomb, we can get this, uh, this document that is the highest annual river flood peaks. Lots of different stations have them, and of course Brisbane does. So when I have a look at it, if we only had 130 years of data, which is similar to that of Lismore, they've got a little bit more, we would see that the 74 flood is the biggest flood, and the 2011 flood, that was the flood that was called the Inland Tsunami. It was still a major flood. It was about four and a half meters. And the 2022 flood that we just had, which isn't on this document, this publication hasn't been updated, but it was about the same size, about four and a half meters. So in many places, you'll see that the one in a hundred year event is lower than the 1974 flood event. And just remember with the one in a hundred year system, uh, modelers don't like it because it makes people think that the event will only happen one in 100 years. Of course, I think people are smarter than that, but they change the system to 1% annual exceedance probability. So this is basically the same thing. There's 1% chance of it happening in one year. It used to be called one in 100. I'll keep using the one in 100 year uh, nomenclature because it's what everyone's used to. So if we use this data, it would be reasonable to say the 74 flood was either around the one in 100 year event possibly bigger, possibly smaller. And in Brisbane, they've actually put the one in a hundred year event much lower than the 1974 event. It's actually the 2011 flood is almost an exact 1% AEP or one in a hundred year event. But if we go back in time and we look at the beginning of records, we can see there were massive flood events in the 1800s. Flood of 1893 was four meters higher than the 2011 flood that is now called the one in a hundred year flood. And the 1841 flood was even bigger than that. In fact, there were nine major floods in under 80 years in 1800. And the one in a hundred year flood level has been breached six times in under 200 years. So I think it's a reasonable question saying, how can this be the 1% AEP or the one in a hundred year flood when it's been breached six times in under 200 years of data? And so this is a very complex system. There are things that can make the flood levels higher or lower. We could say dredging and uh, retention of water and all these sort of things. So yes, I agree with that. But what I think we should look at then is the rainfall. Is the rain radically different in these floods to current floods? So in 1893 in Brisbane catchment, 900 millimetres of rain fell in a 24-hour period. And if you've ever had to pull your car over on the road because the rain was too heavy for you to see the lights of the car in front of you and you had to pull over, well, that is this level of rain, but it's not five minutes or 10 minutes. It's the full 24 hours. 
And not only that, on the day before this massive rain event, 500 mils of rain fell. And on the day before that, over 200 mils. In fact, more rain fell in that week of 1893 than in every flood event since 1893 to now. And not only that, but it was just one of three floods of 1893, three floods in that year. So if we graph the 2011 rain event that was called the Inland Tsunami with the 1974 rain event, which is often the maximum rain event of gauges that don't go back more than about 100 years, with the 1893 rain event, we can see the magnitude of rain that fell is absolutely massive. What's more frightening is more rain fell in the 1841 rain event than the 1893 rain event. Finally, why I have long petitioned governments and the people who create our infrastructure, whether it be modeling or whether it be disaster resilience, I've been onto this for about 15 years. And the reason being is that this isn't an isolated event in Brisbane that an area like Lismore Graphic can say, well, that's north of us, it couldn't happen to us. Brisbane catchment, sure, it's north of us, but if we then go to the south in similar subtropical climate, we could have a look at Dorigo. Its maximum rain event was 850 mils of rain, and that was only 70 years ago. That's 850 mils of rain in a 24-hour period. That's only 70 years ago. It was about 1855. So I didn't want to underplay the massive rain that fell in and around Lismore and around Yamba. Records were set 100% agree. What I really want to do in this video is point out why I've been hammering this for 15 years, why indigenous records, historic records, I don't think they're being used correctly. I don't think they're being taken into account correctly. And one of the problems is it then gives our politicians this kind of get out of jail free card. They can say, look, it was a one in 3000 year event. How could we ever have seen this coming? They should have seen it coming. So just to be clear, this video is just about the use of historic data. It's not on the modeling. I'll address the problems with the modeling next. And also something I wanted to talk about is the reason I'm running in the page electorate. The reason the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was the absolute failure of policy, of modeling, of response, whether it's bushfire, whether it's COVID, whether it's flooding, uh, it has been relentless. And so from someone coming from my particular background, the floods just pushed me over the edge. So please shout out if you want to know anything about me. Uh, I won't talk about my policies on here. This would just be flood related. So just three things. I just re-recorded the end. If you do have knowledge of the indigenous uh, folklore or flood levels, please reach out. I've got a couple of registered surveyors that are very interested in this. Secondly, if you're a property owner that's been impacted, there's a group called sort.org.au, S-O-R-T. Strongly suggest just going on their website and connecting with them and seeing what they have to offer. And finally, I was just thinking about that then, I'll put flood in the title of the videos about the floods and any of the other videos will be something else and then I don't have to talk politics when I talk floods. All right, I hope you all got something out of this and I'll make another one soon.